So, we are now over 600 days into this process. Um, 600 days of writing consistently every single day. Um, and boy, that's... <laughs> I think if you're a writer, I think... I, I, I think if I can get to four digits, I think it'll be really impressive, but... 600 days is no laughing matter. Um, that's if you're a writer, that's pretty <laughs> pretty tough. Um, but I suppose now is a good time to kind of, I guess, remind people about what this is about, why I'm doing it. I talked a lot about in the early stages of of this process. If you go back to like day one, I did this basically because I was coming out of a writing slump. That was it. That, that was the main thing. Um, writing every day was advice that I was given. And so, I mean, you know, you hear it everywhere. Like you can read it in craft books. I mean, um, you know, plenty of authors talk about writing every day. But it's just not something that most authors do. It's not advice most people take. Um, and it's not even something I'd recommend necessarily for everybody to do. That's what this thing started out was. Just getting me out of a slump. I was in a very low place just with everything in my life at the time. Um, it had been a, kind of a tough six month window there. Um, and so that January decided I was going to go for it. Okay. But what is it about? All right. What is this really about now? Cause obviously I'm out of the slump. Um, the best way I can describe it and, and kind of why I'm doing this now, um, it's not so much about beating the procrastination. It's not, it's not so much about worrying that if I don't, if I stop writing somehow, I'll stop doing it for like a, you know, like, like a day will turn to two, turn to three, you know, a month or whatever. Um, that could happen. It's a very real thing with me and I, I believe it. But it's not so much coming from a place of fear and worry. Um, I'm at the point now where I'm doing this every day because I recognize that this is sort of the only way to ever really master the art of writing. I know it sounds very absolutist, um, but hear me out for a minute. There are certain things in life that cannot be outsourced that you cannot push to other people. And there are certain things um, that <clears throat> you must do yourself, but also will take immense time. Something that things that you cannot do and master in a weekend, you cannot master it in, you know, a, a six month course, right? Um, things that you can't even master in two years uh, of a really good college education, right? Um, See more about that commentary on my, my MFA um, thing from yesterday on author's bantering. Um, there are certain things that have to be mastered daily over time for years. And I hate to say it, but just the cold truth is decades. Um, some things might take decades. And you only ever improve in the process when you commit yourself to doing this daily. Um, you cannot be sporadic. You cannot master the art of writing. Um, doing the sort of like the hyper kind of like the that very like initial burst people I don't know what to, what else to call it. I, th I think there are some people that, that this is a better terminology but people basically that like in the beginning come in with a lot of fire and they put in you know 18 hours of like study and practice right you see these people all the time um, like they'll I myself used to be one of those people you know you put in like 18 hours of practice into this this art form like like yeah you know you you you, you crank out like you know 16 hours of study and focus on this like on the first day or two um and then like after a week you're like going maybe you know three four hours a day at it and then after two or three weeks you start getting burnt out because you aren't seeing those initial results yet 
and you become very disenfranchised and you just stop. Um, you can't do that. You can't um, go in with that kind of frantic energy. A lot of people do. Um, this is what happens with like the shiny new idea syndrome with people with authors, people that start these stories they have in their head and they become very disenfranchised with it. Um, this, is why, this is why most people quit. Most people who start stories will never even finish their first one because of that. They go in with a lot of passion, a lot of fire, and the rubber has to meet the road very early on. And once it does, they stop because you don't want to suffer through that for a year or two or whatever. Um, just to get that initial maybe draft or two done. But there are things that have to be done consistently over time. And that's what this is. Right every day, that's what it is. It is me um, trying to just maximize that skill tree we talk about. Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to add more skill points into that tree of writing and unlike video games where you can kind of farm skill points pretty quickly right there are way there are tricks you can you know you can kind of cheat um, this can only be done daily you can only make so much progress a day in terms of your skill and so the way to get further at it is to do it every day now obviously when I say every day I understand that not everybody's gonna do it every day right um, time off is absolutely fine time away from the computer is fine um, working five days a week and taking take a weekend off that's fine my point is being consistent with it that's the bigger thing when I say every day I'm, I'm saying this more in terms of being consistent but the ultimate form of consistency is every day, right? Not missing any time off is the ultimate form of consistency. And so <clears throat> this channel and what I do is about committing to that. Giving myself over to the process of further mastering this craft of writing and doing it every day because I know that this will probably work out eventually. Um, despite everything that I do on this channel, uh, despite all the complaints about how slow the process is, about how frustrating it gets at times, um, those are very real emotions that I experience in the moment and it's important to share that because you too will experience that. Um, there is a bigger picture idea there's a bigger picture awareness that I need to have, which is if you do something consistently over time, you will get better at it, most likely. It's not always the case. Um, and sometimes people pick areas of life to master every day and they pick the wrong ones, ones that don't have a payout, ones that don't, that are, are a waste of time, right? A lot of people who would never write for every day for 10 years, but there are plenty of people that would play video games every day for 10 years, right? That's picking the wrong area of mastery. That's picking the wrong area to, to put those skill points into, um, at least in my opinion. Obviously a time for leisure and fun, but a lot of people pick the wrong area. And so this is about me putting these skill points into the area that I think will bring the most benefit and also the most happiness. It's writing is the nexus of what I love to do, what I'm good at, and what I can offer the world. And so when you find that nexus point, you have to put everything you can into it and to really focus on mastering it. Um, and doing it with an understanding that this may never work out at all. That's the, that's the paradox, I guess, of life. That, that's, the, that's the trick. That's, that's the, the, the cosmic joke, if you will. That 
you go through this never really knowing if it's actually going to work out or not. You, know, you never really are going to know if this was a good call or, this, or if this was a terrible decision. Um, that's that's where the belief in yourself comes at. That's where kind of like the hope and the faith element, I guess, of this process comes in. Um, you're never going to know if what you did was actually worth it or not until it's over. And there's every chance that it won't. I like to think that the odds tend to favor that it will work out, you know, but I, I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's no study that's ever been conducted on this to see, you know, that... Um, but you don't know. But that's okay. When you were in school, you weren't, I mean, at least for me, you probably weren't, if you were like me, you were maybe not completely aware of why education mattered to you. Like why going every day to school mattered, right? You probably had no idea, um, you know, like the biggest, the big impact what that would have on your life. You went because you were more or less like myself, probably forced to do it. <clears throat> and there's no, there was no indication as to whether it would work out. There's no indication that what you were learning in school would ever really pay off for you um, in the real world, right? Um, I often, <laughs> I often went with that kind of. I used to kind of mention that very cliched phrase of "I'm never going to use this in the real world," right? Whenever you get like you know, a tough, um, you know, maybe algebra equation or something like that, or some sort of like geometry question or something, right? Math was different my strong suit. Um, and I'd be like, I'm never going to use this. I'm not planning on starting my own business. I'm not planning on going into the business realm. I'd like, you know, I'm doing something else here with my life. Um, and so I didn't see the point in it, right? But I, I did it with the understanding that I may never use this anyways, right? We took classes in things that we we're not aware we'd ever really need. And it's only looking back on it that we realize, wow, it was important, right? Um, there was no telling if, if what we did was going to be a waste of time. Much in the same way that what we do now, we never know if it was a waste of time or not. But you still have to go after it. It's still important enough that you should do it. Education is important enough to go after, even if you don't end up taking away from it as much as you like um, or even recognize the use of it or even end up using it at all. Plenty of people that get high school degrees that never use, that use maybe what? Like maybe 20% of what they learned in school probably. The rest of it is just wasted information then, right? You know, there, I know plenty of people that, that never, that talk about anything they learned in, in high school English ever. There's no book they ever read, no understanding they ever read that ever has any impact in their life because the jobs they do today don't revolve around it. But education was important enough, and we recognize the importance of it, that it's worth going through it even if it doesn't work out because the chance that it does outweighs that. Same thing with this. For me, writing is important enough that even if I never use it and never ever never works out at all for me, right? My, I never get any kind of publishing deal. I never get anything. I, I, I completely drop out of this business. Um, it's important enough that I'm willing to risk it because I recognize that, that the chance of it working out will pay dividends for me. Okay. Um, I hope that metaphor th with the school kind of makes sense. Um, and yeah. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap up here and be back tomorrow. Again, just putting a bit more, putting a few more skill points into that skill tree. So um, thank you so much, and I will see you all next week. Or tomorrow. <laughs> Revert to my author's bantering thing. <laughs>